السلام بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وآله إن شاء الله وكنتينيو أور حلقة شورت حلقة بات الدار الآخرة we'll keep it short إن شاء الله I think the sisters have a دعوة حلقة in the back so they will be starting soon so ten minutes will be okay إن شاء الله تكلمنا في المرة الماضية عن قصة ذكرها ابن القيم رحمه الله وقال إنه في رجل يعني كانت عنده ابنة وماتت في الطاعون فرآها في منامه فسألها يعني كيف وجدت الآخرة فقالت علمنا وما عملنا فطبعا هو احتار يعني ما المقصود بهذا الكلام فسأل الإمام فقال له يعني علمنا وجوه الخير السهلة التي تأتي بحسنة كثيرة ولكننا ما عملنا يعني معروف مثلا أنه من قال سبحان الله وبحمد سبحان الله العظيم له الأجر الكثير في الجنة وكذا والحديث معروف الإنسان مثلا يقرأ حرف من القرآن له الثواب كذا والأجر كبير جدا بأمور بسيطة جدا من قال اللهم ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك الحديث المعروف سيد الاستغفار من قاله في الليل ومات قبل أن يصبح فهو من أهل الجنة حديث البخاري ومن قاله في الليل أو من قاله في الصباح ومات قبل أن يمسي فهو في الجنة ومن قاله في المساء ومات قبل أن يصبح فهو في الجنة فكم من واحد يعني يقول ذلك إلى غير ذلك من الأمور السهلة أصلا لا تكلف الإنسان شيئا ومع ذلك يعني أكثر الناس لا يفعل هذه الأمور السهلة So last time we mentioned the story of uh, Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah. He mentioned the story of a girl who died in a plague in the Ta'un. So her father saw her in a dream. So he asked her in the dream, how did you find Akhirah? So she said, alimna wa ma'amilna. So he didn't know what, what that meant. He asked one of the shiuch, Mawlana, and the sheikh said, uh, she meant, we knew, but we didn't do. We knew easy ways to make lots of hasanat, but we didn't actually take the time to do these good things. And I gave a few examples, like saying dhikr, for example, the authentic hadith, there are so many about the importance and the significance of dhikr. But how many people actually keep their adhkar? Uh, the dua, the Sayyidul Istighfar from the Prophet Sallallahu Allahumma arunta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa abdu. It's a popular hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, whoever says this short dua in the morning, and dies before the evening, he or she will go to Jannah straight. And whoever says it at night, and they pass away before the morning, they go to Jannah straight. How many people say this hadith in the evening and in the morning? Not, not many people. Also reading Quran, we know that how much uh, you know, reward or how many hasanat this can generate for you. If you say Alif Lam Mim, this is uh, three letters, each is one hasana, up to 10, up to Allahu A'lam how many? This is very easy, like easy stuff. Also when you visit the sick, uh, the angels will go after you and they will make dua for you, 70,000 in some hadith. Uh, fantastic rewards, but how many people actually uh, take advantage of these hadith and, and, and they say these small things? Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. There's so many hasanat and, and you don't have to pay money to make hasanat. It's very easy to make these hasanat but people don't take advantage of this easy way to make hasanat. In the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I love you from the rest of the world. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if this person were to come back to life, then the first thing he will do is not to eat biryani or is not to go to uh, marine land, nothing. The first thing he will do is to pray two rak'ah. The Prophet ﷺ said two rak'ah for him are better than this whole world and everything in it. Why? Because now he knows the reward. Because he has seen the reward in Akhirah, he knows the great reward of Salah, Namaz. Now well, if he comes back, this is the first thing he will do. مما يروى عن بعض الناس إنه لما يكون في حالة الاحتضار بيقول أشياء أو بيرى أشياء يعني فيما يتعلق بالآخرة. Sometimes we hear stories about people when in the you know throes of death they're giving up their soul. Sometimes they they talk about things that we can't see. Like some people they see their parents when they are dying. 
or they talk about Jannah, or they talk about Malaika, or something, right? And when someone is dying, they actually see the reward for their deeds, and they wish they have done better and they, they have done more. كان في رجل يعني كان مسافر مع بعض أصدقائه وجاءه الموت وهو في الطريق فجعل يقول ليته كان كله ليته كان بعيدا ليته كان جديدا وأخذ يكرر الكلمات So a person was traveling with his friends they were on a journey and he started to die on the way and he was saying these words but people with him his company they didn't know what he meant he said, I wish it was all of it, and I wish it was far away, and I wish it was the new one. So people had no clue. So they went back to his family, and they spoke to his mom, and, and they said, okay, wh what did he mean? Like, we didn't know what he was talking about. He said, his mother said, that uh, whenever he was eating, and a poor person passed by, so he would give them like half of the food, or a little bit of the food. So now when he saw the whole reward, he said, Laytahu kana kulla. I wish I gave the poor person all the food I had. Because now I see the reward, I wish I had given them all the food. Laytahu kana ba'idan. I wish it was far away. This person used to walk to the masjid, so it was like two, two three minutes away. When he saw the reward, all the steps that he takes to, to the masjid would remove each step will remove one sayyia, one evil deed. It will raise them up one rank in Jannah, and it will bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is mentioned in authentic hadith. So now when they see the reward for all the steps they take to the masjid, he will say, I wish the masjid was far away, so I will take more hasana. And I wish it was the new one. His mother said one day, uh, it was Eid, and a poor person came by and he didn't have like a nice clothes for Eid. So my son had a used uh, garment or thawb abaya and he had a new one. So he had a new one and old one. So he gave him the old one. And when he saw the reward, he said, I wish I gave him the new one because now he sees uh, the reward. Taran, most of the people who regret before they die, when they miss all these opportunities, they miss out, miss out a big time. This comes down to two things, and I conclude with this, inshallah. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث في البخاري وفي غيره نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحة والفراغ. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says a lot of people don't take advantage of two things, and they miss out because of two things: الصحة health والفراغ free time. People miss out because of these two things because when someone is healthy. They want to run around, they want to do things and jump around. And so they don't focus on what is important. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ talks about the youth in many hadith, uh, uh, in his authentic hadith. And al farag free time, The scholars say, if you don't busy yourself with good stuff, yourself will busy you with evil stuff. And this is why a lot of people will get in trouble because of drugs and uh, you know reckless driving and crime and shootings and stuff. Are youth? Why? Because they are young and healthy. Because if some when someone grows older, they slow down, they become wise, mashallah. But when they are young, they are doing stuff that they may regret later in their lives. Well, farah, free time. A lot of people get in trouble because of free time. They don't know how to use their time. They don't know how you, they use their time. And this is why they do stupid things. Uh, in Edmonton, all the time, like youth were coming to the masjid for janazah, like shootings and shooting is in nice nightclubs and crime and drugs and they killing each other. Why? Because they, were, they didn't have anything to do. So imagine if these kids were going to school or they were memorizing Quran, they wouldn't have time to think about all these bad things. Hatta al ابن القيم رحمه الله لما في إحدى القصص يعني كان هو وأستاذه ابن تيمية كان مر على بعض التطار أو الصليبين اللي احتلوا البلاد الإسلامية وكانوا يشربون الخمر يشربوا يناموا يشربوا ينام فقال له ابن القيم يعني ألا تنهاهم عن شرب الخمر ويصحصحوا كذا وبتاع قالوا ما هم إذا صحصحوا هيبقى عندهم فراغ وعندهم صحة وهيجوا يهلكونه ويضربونه صح 
انت اتركهم على ما هم فيه نايمين خلاص يعني نوم للظالم عباده كما يقولون. So in this story of Ibn Qayyim رحمه الله and his uh, teacher Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he passed by some uh, crusaders or some Tartars, they invaded Baghdad and the Muslim world. So he saw them drinking alcohol and losing consciousness, like they were sleeping. They couldn't stand up. So Imam Ibn Qayyim said to his teacher, can, can we just wake them up and make them sober and, you know, so he said, no, because if they wake up, they will give us a hard time. So leave them alone because they don't use their time and don't, they don't use their health in a good way. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with good things, good health, eyes to see with, ears to hear with, tongues to speak with. And the problem is when we use these things in the haram, you look at what is haram, you hear what is haram, you say what is haram, you are not using the ni'mah of health that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you in a good way. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us uh, take advantage of our health and our free time. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to what is best for us in this life and the rest in the life to come. And to give us sincerity in everything we say and do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yazuqana husna al khawatim. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a good ending of our lives and we'll continue next time. And uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the Muslim community and uh, to give hidayah to people, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept those who passed away in the incident in Quebec as shaheed and to give shifa to those who were injured. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give sabr to their families. Ameen, ameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala ala sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.